Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. And I'm excited to share with you guys where our six-year-old warm blood is at today. It's been a little bit since our last video. Things have made a lot of progress. And now we're ready to tackle cantering him. So I'm excited to show you the steps that we're gonna use to help build his confidence and his rhythm and relaxation at a canter. Let's jump into it. So as you guys know, I'm a big fan of preparing horses on the ground to make the riding part easier. Now this particular horse, his previous training, he was managed and controlled quite a bit, both on the ground and the lunging, kind of with side reins and things like that, in the saddle, getting introduced to contact very early on in his development. And so when I give him freedom, more room, it's easy for him to get nervous, unconfident, his breathing changes. So at the same time, he's gotta to learn to be more responsible for where he puts his feet, how he's traveling and rating his speed. When the rider picks up contact, it needs to be about communication and shaping, not control, okay? So I don't wanna get on him and control his canter and hold him back. I want him to find a nice loose rein canter and build his confidence before we dive into building a collected canter with contact and asking him to use his body correctly. We'll refer to that as position, okay? Getting him in the best position I want to build the mental connection where he understands I'm just asking him to canter on a loose rein and asking him to maintain speed and direction. That's the name of the game. So we're going to get started with this on the ground first. Now what I've gotten here is a really long rope that's going to allow me to give him lots of space, which to him will feel like riding him on a loose rein. Okay, and so we're gonna let him develop a little bit of rhythm relaxation online here with a big rope, big long rope. Normally we would do this on like a 20 foot rope, um, but we're gonna switch here to a, a one that's about 45 feet long and uh, see if he can find a little bit of confidence cantering. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna set him up. We've already done a little bit of groundwork with him here. Uh, just kind of gotten him warmed up a little bit. So now he's ready to kind of jump into cantering. So in other words, whenever I have a more difficult conversation to have with a horse, I want to sandwich it with easy stuff. So we'll start off with slower things that he's familiar with at the beginning and at the end. And then I'll put the, the tougher thing in the middle, the new thing or the more difficult thing, which today is going to be cantering on a longer rope. <clears throat> so I'm going to ask him to... Uh, Bend his rib cage here. We'll get started with our three circle game on the ground. Just make sure he can give us this trot first. Once we kind of have that, then I'm gonna ask him to canter on a smaller circle and we'll let him out to a bigger one. There we go. So I don't know if you guys could hear that, but his breathing changed. I do like that he's staying in the canter. He's getting stronger in his hindquarters, which allows him to stay there. Again, I'm gonna give him more rope here. And I'm pretty happy with this overall. Um, and now it needs to get a lot better, uh, but I'm pretty happy with how well he's maintaining canter. But you can see his breathing has changed, his head is up, he is anxious. And so I'm just gonna approach and retreat with this. So I'm pretty happy with kind of how he was doing there. So now I'm gonna ask him to come on back in and we're just gonna let him decompress. So a lot of people use the strategy of if the horse gets bothered, just stay there until they get unbothered. And that will work for some horses. This particular horse will stay bothered for a really long time. And so the idea of, oh, just let them run until they slow down, th that's not gonna work for a horse that's got a big motor and a lot, a lot of go. And so, the, the, I want to use more psychology there, which is approach or retreat. I'm going to, because this is really ultimately more about his emotions. Mentally, he knows what to do. Physically, he can do it now. It's about getting his emotions to be more settled at the canter. Cantering brings up his emotions. So I'm going to bring him up and I'm going to bring him back down. We'll bring him up and bring him back down. As we approach and retreat with that, he won't get up as much and it will give us a more of an opportunity to start off with a softer canter. This session also is not a one and done kind of a deal. You know, things like trailer loading, you can have a horse that's not in the trailer and they're in the trailer. You know, and it's real obvious black and white there. With this cantering and building confidence um, and emotional fitness 
add a canter on a bigger space. This is something that's going to take time to develop. It's not a one, one and done kind of session. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take, but it's going to take more than one session. So each session, I'm going to look for little improvements um, to his, his confidence and his comfort. And uh, we'll, go, we'll just build it from there one step at a time. So again, kind of set up the trot here first. I'm going to slow this down just a little bit, get a little more bend. See, I'm bending the rib cage there, just kind of setting him up for success here. Ask him into a little canter. Very nice. Now I'm going to kind of let it out. Now you can see that would be a lot of canter to sit on if you were riding him. It's pretty fast, pretty big canter, I know because I've done it. <laughs> And so I was looking for ways on the ground to help make this a little bit easier for me in the saddle. You know, and that's a, that's a really good lesson in itself of like, if you're really handy with a horse on the ground and you're not as handy or comfortable in the saddle, or it's more dangerous for you in the saddle, set them up on the ground and make things a little easier. Just like starting a colt. We're going to prepare them on the ground to make our life a little easier. Now there he kind of fell out of it. I'm not going to make him feel wrong. He made a choice to slow down. That's the answer. Now, I would have rathered it when I asked him to slow down versus when he chose to slow down. Um, but he made a good choice there to slow down. And so I'm gonna reward that by just resetting, set it up again. Now, you can see I could keep him in on this smaller circle, and it's a little better, isn't it? But what I'm trying to do is give him a little bit more room, bring him down into a little bit deeper water, and see if he can handle, maybe, you know, at that distance, can he keep his canter together? Again, he started breathing real shallow, and he's breathing quickly. I don't know if the mic's picking it up or not, but he's kind of going, you know, kind of that breathing noise. Ooh, I like that. He really looked in. He asked a good question there. That was really nice. When I say he asked a question, he, he just looked in, he's like, are we done? Is that a good spot? And that was a left-brained choice for him to make. And so, so I'm gonna take that. I'm pretty happy with where we're starting there. Again, I'm not, it's not about trying to tackle this in one day. So I'm pretty happy with where that's at. And that was a reasonable enough canner for me to say, you know what, I think I could ride that. I think I could go ahead and get on him and uh, develop that canner a little bit further under saddle. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get mounted up. So since I saw you guys last, uh, Cal has made a lot of progress. I'm excited to share that with you guys. And one of the things I forgot to mention in the previous video was the vet work that had been done to make sure that these were training issues more so than physical issues. Now, physically this horse needed to build more muscle and get stronger. And that's where my wife came in and helping him do some, some physical um, kind of therapy rehab stuff. But that was more about strengthening. It was just strengthening. He was fully clear to go into work. He had had a full neurological exam. He had been scoped for ulcers. He had had uh, a bunch of blood work done and um, by a really fantastic vet um, in our area here. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, there was a lot of couch quarterbacks that were saying, oh, it's got to be this. It's got to be that. And I think there's also a little lesson that I would like to share with you. The more experienced and educated any professional is in their profession, the less likely they are to give you a vehement statement and say, this is what it is for sure from just seeing a short clip on a video, okay? Whenever you're diagnosing something, for me, whether it's a training or behavior issue or for a doctor or a veterinarian, you need to fully understand everything involved before you would either like qualify horse to say, oh, this horse needs an x-ray or needs an ultrasound. You know, it can't, the, the vet or the doctor can't just take people's money and say, oh, we're just going to test everything even though there's no reason to test things. On the flip side of that, as a trainer, I'm not going to give somebody uh, my opinion on something unless I know all the facts. And so I just want to encourage you guys, be careful what you read online and be careful who you take advice from because it's really important to seek out a knowledgeable professional that's going to ask a lot of questions to lead to a qualified answer. So just keep that in mind. Hopefully that tips helps and uh, let's jump into this here. So one of the patterns that we've been doing with him is one of my favorites, which is ride and guide. So it's riding a lot of squares where if the horse is kind of leading out through their outside shoulder, we'll kind of sign them up by doing a 90 degree turn to the inside. 
And the, the name of the game here is to give him responsibility on a straightaway and look where he's going. And so every time I feel him leaning right or left, I'll pick up a rein and just ask him for a turn, like right there. Look up, turn, and I just feel like he's gotten a lot stronger and a lot more balanced in these turns, and I feel like we're actually getting pretty good at this. Now, I don't know if you guys could hear that, but he just made this noise. And we've been getting a lot more of that lately as he gets more balanced. The other thing I've been doing quite a bit of is stopping. Sit, turn, roll back, and head out the other way. Now, this is not a common thing that you'll see a dressage horse uh, do, but this is just one way that I could just get him to just be kind of ready and alert and paying attention to a rider that is not going to focus on me being responsible for where his feet are, but that's his job. The other thing is he had a hard time kind of going down this hill. You know, horses have muscles can have eccentric and concentric contractions and it was harder for him to control his body going downhill and so i've been peppering that in a lot as we ride here right up this side of the arena here turn come down this kind of two or three percent grade and ask him to really stay balanced and stay under control and as you guys can see it's really gotten a lot better and uh i'm just really happy with kind of how this is progressing and then again, every once in a while, I'll just do a weird turn kind of to the outside here. Say, hey, you need to be aware of where your feet are going. Also, what's interesting is there he slowed down in the turn. And previously, what he used to do is the turn would cause him to get unbalanced, and then he would want to go fast out of it because that would cause him to get emotional. So he's keeping it together a lot more now. Um, he's being way more responsible for his feet and uh, what they're doing and what's going on down there. And so that has led me to kind of wanting to um, you know recalibrate what we're working on and so two things that I've been peppering in more lately is starting to work on some cantering so we're gonna get into that and then also obstacles and getting him to be more aware of where his feet are while we're doing some obstacles so let's go ahead and check that out so when I set him up to canter one of the main things that I'm thinking about is trying to give him a, a loose rein where he can be responsible for his speed and direction, but also enough support that he doesn't get too worried. You know, it still needs to be an achievable question. It can't be too hard of a thing. Like if I just said, oh, we're going to go can or bridle this out in an open field. Well, that would be obviously way too big of a thing. And so between that and cantering in a round pen or an indoor arena where it's actually quite easy for us, somewhere in the middle there is cantering in a bigger space like my arena. My arena here is 140 feet wide by 220 feet long. That's a pretty good size um, riding arena. So he feels a lot of space here. He feels a lot of freedom to move forward, which is good, but that can bring those emotions up. And so I'm just gonna approach and retreat with that cantering a little bit here under saddle and uh, see how we go. Now, one of the temptations is, is to pick him up and control him because that sets it up to make it a lot easier. Now I'm gonna do that through the transition and then once he gets into the canner, then I'm gonna turn him loose and give him a little bit more responsibility. There we go. That's feeling good. And again, I'll just keep a little bit of connection on that inside rein, just letting him know we're turning. Give him more moments of straightness here. He's blowing out and he's relaxing. That's feeling really good. There he got a little bothered. So I'm gonna pick him up here and just kind of wind him down. Good, and we'll kind of set up the other direction. I like to alternate directions pretty frequently because it kind of turns into a pattern if you do it every other time. Um, but that was a really good cantering for him out here. I've tested it a couple of other times. Not enough to where I can say that I've really trained it or worked on it. And again, you can hear all the blowing. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but he's blowing out a lot. And he used to really hold a lot of tension through his rib cage during canter. And so I'm really happy that he's able to release that today. And um, I think warming him up on the ground with that longer rope made a big, big difference there. This is the first day we've ever done that with him. So. Just kind of testing things, seeing, seeing if anything sticks. So 
So I'm trying to really softly kind of put them into that canner. There we go. Now I'm just trying to stay nice and loose and relaxed. I'll kind of rub on his head here, just helping him find this freestyle canner. Find forward. It's a big old canner to sit. So I got to really roll along with the punches here. Atta boy. Super happy with that. Now you can see I'm using a smaller section of my arena and as this feels good, we'll open it up and we'll make it a little bit bigger. But I kind of like to establish an area. So just because I'm in a big old arena doesn't mean I have to use all of it to start with. If I can get, because mentally just for him to be out here is a big challenge. So if I can just kind of use a more comfortable circle for him to start with and then build off of that. I don't have to train a horse to canter better or canter more, uh, more balanced and more slowly uh, with better impulsion on a straightaway right away, <laughs> okay? Okay, we'll set it up here again to the right. See if we can do a little walk to canter. Now he didn't quite get into that and that's no big deal. <clears throat> because what I'm not gonna do is put a lot of pressure on him to make sure he gets into that canter. It's about him finding a slower, more relaxed canter. There we go, make it a little bigger. Hit some more straight lines here. He lost it a little bit, of, a little bit on the downhill there. I don't know if you guys could see that. And that's where again, probably a lot of the uh, uh, couch quarterbacks would probably go, oh, there it is, I saw it, you know. <laughs> That's also going down that hill a little bit. That's gonna be harder for him to control his body. That's what we're using a lot of the obstacles for. Um, we're still building strength there and uh, that's gonna be coming more and more with time. The difference is he's gotten strong enough now that he's safe to ride, safe to work on these things and uh, we can keep progressing. So I'm pretty happy with where we've gotten there. Now we're gonna head over to the obstacles and kind of check him out with that. All right, so another thing that we've been kind of working on again is and we've been doing this a lot on the ground, I've just kind of recently started doing it under saddle, is getting him to pay more attention to where he's putting his feet. And this has two main purposes for me. One, it gets him to be more left brain. It gets him to think and go, what is the puzzle here? What's the question I gotta answer? And it gives us a break from, from all the work in the arena. But it also, in this conversation here, you're gonna see me trying to talk to his hind legs and seeing if I can ask those hind legs to come up underneath him a little bit more. So I'm just gonna ask him, oh, almost. So you can see, it's just this little conversation about the hind feet. Did he make it? Almost. Can you step your hind feet up? Once we get him confident with putting all four feet up, then we'll start looking at now. He's kind of stepped forward there. I could try to hold him there, but that's not, that wouldn't make it a game. That makes it just me trying to tell him what to do. So I'm gonna let him come over here and explore what's over here. And as it turns out, what's over here is a little bit of pressure, or as I like to call it, hot lava. So a little bit of hot lava over there. And then we'll bring it right back to the pedestal and release him here. So the idea is that there's less pressure here at the obstacle because there's already this inherent uh, pressure. There we go, very good. Now this is actually a qualified uh, pedestal for mountain trail to be able to turn your horse around. I don't remember exact measurements here, but when I was building some of these obstacles, I had that in mind. And I don't think you see a lot of warm bloods doing mountain trail, meaning this is a big horse for this size pedestal. And my next goal with this is, is to start to see if we can actually get him to pay attention to his feet and take a step on it and start to turn around while on the pedestal. And again, to me, this demonstrates him really controlling his body, him being very deliberate and very aware of where those hind feet are. Yes. Oh, we lost it. So I gotta put those hind feet back up. There we go. And we'll keep our little turn going here. Oh, lost it again. Hot lava. Get those hind feet back up there before they burn off. So. I'm super happy with this. I'm super impressed with how much he's learning to control his body and pay attention to where his feet are. And I think that this pedestal really kind of shows, shows that as a good example. Again, came off it here. 
hot lava, a little bit of pressure over here, a little bit of pressure. I'm just kind of flapping my legs, just being kind of noisy. It's like, the game is, how do you keep Ryan quiet? And we keep Ryan quiet by keeping all four feet on the pedestal. Whoop. Now each time I'll try to get him to step up here just a little bit quicker with a little bit more certainty. And that just makes it, you know, a little bit more challenging. Whoop, stay back on it. But you can see how much he's really got to control himself in order to do that. So it's not an easy thing for this horse. Whoop, we're off it again. Let's go explore what's over here. Turns out there's a little bit of pressure here. A little bit of pressure. And right back to that pedestal. Oh, there we go. See, he stepped up to it really confidently there. So, so I'll take that one, and now I'll just let him sit and just soak on that a little bit and uh, let him just kind of get the credit for, for making a really good choice. Again, this is about mental fitness, and it's also about uh, physically him getting stronger and stronger and being able to hold these positions longer and longer. So let's go ahead and head over to the next one. So another, another obstacle that I really like to do for this kind of thing is what we have is a narrow high beam. And again, this is another mountain trail obstacle. And this is arguably one of the most difficult ones that we have out here in our, our playground. Um, it's just for a lot of horses that they're really gonna try to go right or left off of it. They're gonna try to jump over it, different things. Um, and they really just gotta pay attention to their feet and where, how they're doing everything in order to do it. We have you know, play days at our house where you know, local barns and, and uh, riders will come over here and, and test their skills on these obstacles. And uh, this one is the one that gives people a lot of trouble. And so to this, to this point, I've only asked him to put two feet on it. And um, we're going to see, you can see he's kind of crooked here. So it's really easy for them to think off of it over there. So I'm going to kind of sign him up to that. So I'm going to squeeze him here, see if he wants to step all the way off of it. Or if he wants, oh, he just got straight. That was a really good choice. That away. It's interesting. I fully thought he was going to jump off of it to the left there. So let's go ahead and ask for another step. And you can see when, when you get a horse working for you, can you see how methodical he's being? He's picking his way through this. He's thinking about it. He's being very conscious. Ask him for a step. Oh, and then he kind of came off it. So again, same thing. It's hot lava over here. So I'll put a little bit of pressure on off to the side here. And then we'll restart. But I was super happy. Now, a lot of people only get excited if the horse does the whole thing. They did the obstacle. They got into the trailer. They crossed the water. They did whatever. I get excited when I feel that horse thinking and trying for me. Because he had a choice there. He could have chose to act like a prey animal, head off to the side, and get worried about it. Or he could act like a partner and get straighter to it and think forward and over it. That a boy. Really good. So this is, I'm super thrilled right now because this is the first time he's been able to get all four feet. This is maybe our uh, third time uh, training this obstacle. Um, same thing with the pedestal that we already showed you. So I'm going to take that right there. And again, you can just see how mindful he's being about where he's putting his feet. Now physically, once he's on here, this isn't hard for him. See if he can walk the plank here. Atta boy. Slow and calm and chill. So I'm gonna quit him right there. He's in a fantastic frame of mind. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're learning how we gotta put it all together. Mental, emotional, and physical. So many people are so quick to jump onto the physical bandwagon. And I'm one of the first people to make sure that my horse is 100% sound, 100% ready to do the things that I'm asking him to do. My wife is an equine physical therapist for crying out loud. We understand the horse's body and how to make sure that they're healthy and ready to do what we're asking them to do. No more, no less. But my specialty is getting to their mind and getting them to understand the job and have clear communication and connection with the rider. I hope you guys are able to see that through these videos. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.